Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to understand what is a Spring Boot, how to create Spring Boot application, internals of Spring Boot, how to work with banner in the Spring Boot, how to develop REST API by using Spring Boot, how to generate Excel report using Spring Boot application, how to perform CRUD operations with the database using Data JPA, how to dockerize our Spring Boot application, how to deploy Spring Boot application in the AWS cloud, and how to connect with AWS RDS database using Spring Boot application. Before going to start, let me introduce myself. My name is Ashok. I'm having 10 plus years of experience as a Java full stack developer. Let's get started. What is Spring Boot? Spring Boot is one approach to develop Spring based applications with less configurations. You can develop your application by using Spring Framework, but you need to write configurations on your own. To avoid that configurations, Spring Boot came into picture. By using Spring Boot, we can create the application that you can just run. That configurations will be taken care by Spring Boot. Spring Boot introduced POM starters. Dependencies, they have simplified. To develop one web application, you no need to add multiple dependencies. One single POM starter, web starter is sufficient. If you add the web starter, it will give you all the required dependencies to develop and run one web application. Auto configuration. In the Spring Framework, as a programmer, we need to do the configurations manually. What are the beans available? Start the IOC container, create the bean objects and all. But in the Spring Boot, auto configuration introduced. It will take care of the configuration which is required for our application. How beautiful it is. Next one, embedded server. Whenever you develop a web application, to run that application, we need to deploy that into server. We need to download and set up that server and we need to package our application and we need to deploy our application. Here, in the Spring Boot, embedded server concept available. That means Spring Boot is providing an embedded server to run our applications directly. You no need to do any deployment in the external server when you go for Spring Boot. It is having an internal server that is called embedded server or embedded container. Spring Boot is having lot of demand to develop the web applications in the market nowadays. Right. To build our first application with the Spring Boot, what are the prerequisites? So, as part of this application creation, I will be using Java 1.8 version and I am using Spring Toolsuit IDE and Maven I am going to use as a build tool. So, you don't need to worry much about them. So, in the future classes, we are going to see about them in detail. Right. So, in order to create our first application, I'm going to use Spring Initializer website. So here, so start.spring.io is the URL to open Spring Initializer, right? So using this website provided by the Spring, we can create our first application based on Spring Boot. So project uh, based on what build tool? Maven or Gradle? Support is there with the Maven and Gradle, so I'm choosing Maven. It's supporting for it's supporting for three programming languages java kotlin and groovy all these three are going to run based on the jvm so here i'm choosing java and spring boot so which version of the spring boot you want to use so if you observe they are only choosing by default 2.2.6 is the latest stable version the remaining versions are available but they are still under snapshot right so stable versions we are choosing which is 2.2.6 and project metadata so you can give so here I'm giving the project details, com.coding tips. Right. Artifact ID, what is the name of the project that you want to use? 01 first Spring Boot application. Right. So description, what are the package name that you want to give? So here I'm giving package name as com.coding tips and what is the type of the package that you want to use if you want to go for standalone then choose jar so if you want a web application then go for war so in the boot web application also can be deployed in the jar format because boot execution will begin from main method and here i'm choosing we'll talk about that in next classes right here i'm choosing java version 8 and here we have options generate this project explore this project or share this project so here i am choosing an option explore 
So how exactly that project is going to be created? It is giving the outline. So here it is created one pom.xml file in that. So boot parent starter is available with version number we have chosen, right? And one dependency Spring Boot Starter. So this is called as Starter Pom, which is required to run our boot application. And go inside the SRC. So here, uh, whatever the package that we have chosen, right? In that package, it is created one class which is application.java. This is called start class of the Spring Boot. Spring Boot application execution will begin from this is start class only. People will call it as main class also in the Spring Boot. And under the resources, one properties file got created, application.properties. So here we can write our configuration properties. Like, so if you want to connect with the database, database configuration properties we will write here, SMTP properties we will write, any messages that you want to use in the application we will write in this properties file. So in the form of key and value pair, we can write config properties in this application dot properties file and test class also got created so to perform the unit testing so we can use this test class unit test we can write inside this test class this is the total outline of our first spring boot application right now let's download this application so which we created this application by using start dot spring dot io website this is called spring initializer to create boot applications then click on this download button then one zip file got downloaded right go to that zip right extract this extract through this folder that zip file i extracted right so this is the project that we created in the inside the spring initializer now, so take this project url up to the location where pom.xml file is available so here our pom.xml file is available now so here i am choosing this path i copied this path now go to our ide now so as it is a maven project i will import this maven project into ide this is spring tool suit ide file import existing maven projects paste the path which we copied of our project which we downloaded click on this browse so that it will point to that pom.xml it will identify the pom.xml file then click on finish so project is getting imported to our toolsuit ide So this is one way of creating our boot application. So here I used Spring Initializer website. We can create that boot application directly from our IDE also, right? So that is the second way that we can use. So first, uh, let's complete this process. Then we, I will show you the second way also to create our boot application. So it is taking some time to import because it is downloading some dependencies which are required because this is the first time we are importing this project with that version. Yeah, now this project got imported. So this is our application that we downloaded from Spring Initializer website. So this is Maven project folder structure because we have chosen Maven as our build tool. Now let's explore this. So this is our pom.xml file where boot starter parent dependency will be available and boot starter dependency also will be available this is parent starter and java 1.8 version we have chosen and boot starter dependency and by default test dependency also coming for our application right now src main java main resources test java is available in the src main java application that java class we have seen in the website so this is called as start class which is entry point for our boot application properties file is available so where we can configure our configuration properties in the form of key and value pair and test class is also created to perform unit testing this is based on spring boot based test fine so with this we are able to create our application let's try 
running this application once right click run as boot app if application runs successfully we should be able to see banner banner logo here right perfect so this is called spring boot banner so it is printing the version number also and application got terminated so successfully we are able to create our first application based on the spring boot and we are able to run it also when we create boot application by default one class is getting created that class is called as start class or we can say that is main class in the spring boot application so in this class we can see one annotation that is at the rate spring boot application what this annotation does in the background this boot application annotation is equal to three annotations right they are at the rate configuration at the rate enable auto configuration and at the rate component scan this one annotation is equal to three annotations right what these three annotations are going to do for our boot application first one is at the rate configuration configuration annotation helps in spring annotation based configuration suppose you want to configure some beans you want to configure a data source you want to configure some other components that are required in our application for that we can go for at the rate configuration annotation this is class level annotation so to represent one java class as configuration class we will use this configuration annotation right now inside this class we can write the beans also suppose i want to customize instantiation process of particular class right for example rest template i want to customize the object creation for the rest template class for that we can write a method and we can annotate that method with at the rate bean annotation right so earlier in the legacy versions of the spring framework uh, people used it to follow xml files approach to perform the configuration whereas from the spring 3.0 onwards we have the freedom to move out of the xml files how can we avoid the xml files by using spring java configuration approach so to perform this java based configuration we will use this configuration annotation all right now next annotation at the rate enable auto configuration this is very 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 important concept in spring boot so this enable auto configuration annotation tells spring boot to guess how you want to configure spring based on the jar dependencies that we have added so when our when we are creating the project we are adding several starter pomps in the pom.xml right so based on those starter pomps this annotation tells to boot to guess the functionality that requires to configure our application right now this annotation auto configures the beans that are present in the class path so what is the advantage this is simplifies the developer work by guessing the required beans from the class path and configures to run that application so if you add a starter pom in the pom.xml file then it will guess what are the components that are required to run this application for example so i added a dependency for h2 database which is embedded database so if i add that dependency in the pom.xml file then this auto configuration will guess that oh for this application h2 embedded database is required and it is going to configure that in memory database similarly if you add web starter in the pom.xml then this auto configuration will guess that for this application tomcat container is required to run so it is going to guess the components that are required to run our application so how it is going to guess what are the components that are required so let us see a simple example for that so if you go for your boot application here uh, we added the dependencies in the pom.xml file so these dependencies are maven dependencies right now so go to the project here we can see maven dependencies available so expand this maven dependencies here we can find one jar with a name called spring boot auto configure right expand this jar inside this jar we are having several packages now go to 
down here we can find one file with a one folder with a name called meta hyphen inf right expand this inside this we can see one file with a name called spring.factories now let's open this spring.factories file all right in this file we will see what are the components that are loading by auto configuration so how it will guess these are the configurations are required it depends on the dependencies you configure in the pom.xml right fine let us check for jpa jpa repository auto configuration ldap auto configuration mongo auto configuration redis auto configuration like the context listeners logging configuration property placeholder configuration so what are the components that are required for our application that will be available as part of this spring.factories file that file we can find inside meta inf folder this folder is available inside our auto configurer jar which is available inside our maven dependencies so i hope you understood what is this auto configuration auto configuration is used to configure the components automatically which are required to run our application you may get a doubt how boot will understand what components are required to run this application boot is going to read our pom.xml file what are the dependencies that are specified in the pom.xml file based on that it will configure the things that are required to run our application right next one component scan this is also very important component right in the spring boot so what is the purpose of this component scan at the rate component scan tells spring to look for other components configurations and services in the specified package right in our application we are going to create several user defined components some predefined components will be coming in the jars which we are adding in the pom.xml file and several other components that we are going to create like some controller classes we will create service classes we will create and some repositories also we are going to create then how boot will understand which class should be considered as a spring bin for that purpose it will use component scanning all right so spring is able to auto scan detect and register your bins or components from predefined project package so whenever you create a classes inside a package boot is having the capability to perform the scanning on your packages to register those classes as spring bins right if you don't specify any package then which package it is going to scan it will consider base package where that spring boot start class is available so whenever boot project is created one class is getting created inside a package that package will be considered as a base package so spring boot is going to scan that base package and sub packages of that base package also so let us see this here we have a project inside that we have one class application.java this is start class of our spring boot so for this class we specified boot application annotation so you can go inside this annotation and we can see that this annotation is equal to boot configuration enable auto configuration and component scan just now we discussed about these three annotations configuration annotation to represent this class as a configuration class right auto configuration based on the dependencies added in the build path it is going to identify what components are required to run our application and component scan this component scanning is used to understand which classes it has to load and consider them as spring bins right now here i did not specify any component scan then what will happen boot will consider this package as base package so it will go to this package it will check for the classes and it will load those classes and will register them as spring beans so there are some annotations to represent our class as a spring bean for example let me create one class here and see whether that class is getting loaded by spring boot or not right click on this package new class so here i am creating class with the name called car right now i will add 
zero param constructor for this class to see whether object is created or not for this class right zero param constructor is added just i am writing one sop statement for logging on the console sysout car constructor right now run this application run as boot app so application execution will start from the start class where we have at the red spring boot application annotation and the main method will be called inside that we are calling spring application dot run method now application started and application got terminated also are we able to see that message on the console which we have written in the sop no the reason is this class will be considered as a normal java class because we are not representing this class as spring bin now here i am using one stereotype annotation to represent this class as spring bin that is at the rate component so component is predefined annotation in the spring framework which is part of org dot spring framework dot stereotype package right now run the same application again run as boot app run as boot app now we can see the console banner got printed and car constructor message is also printed that means now this class is loaded by spring boot as part of component scan did i specified which package it has to scan no that is built in functionality in the spring boot because there is a annotation boot application as part of this annotation component scanning will happen so what is the proof it is going to scan other packages also let me take one more package as a child package for base package base package is com dot coding tips com dot coding tips dot service right inside this i am creating one class new class car service right now let me represent this class also as a spring bin by using at the red component right i am writing zero param constructor sysout car service constructor if this message is printed on the console then we can say this package also scanned and loaded this class and recognized as a spring bin right click the pack project run as boot app now we can see car constructor got executed car service class constructor also got executed so with this we can say component scanning is built in functionality as part of the spring boot application annotation so i did not specify component scan annotation so it is considering this package as base package and this package will be considered as child package for the base package because it is following base package naming convention now let me create one more package without following base package naming convention simply i am for writing com dot dav com dot dav right click new class here i am writing a class with name called car dav let me represent this class as spring bin at the red component zero param constructor sysout car dao constructor right let's execute this run as boot app now you can see only those two classes got executed right this car dao class is not executed because package naming convention is different so what is the base package the package which contains the start class will be considered as base package if the remaining packages also starts with the base package then those packages will be considered as child packages for the base package and those packages will participate in the component scanning com dot dao package not following base package naming convention hence this package will not participate in component scanning process right so i hope you understood what is the purpose of at the red spring boot application annotation 
right so spring boot application annotation is very important annotation in the spring boot applications right this one annotation is equal to three annotations at the rate configuration at the rate enable auto configuration at the rate component scan at the rate configuration is used to represent our java classes as a configuration class that is used to avoid xml based configurations enable auto configuration annotation is used to guess the components that are required to run our applications. Component scan annotation is used to scan for the classes to represent them as a spring beans. Here I'm going to create one boot application using spring tool suit ID. So first let's complete this process. File, new project. Here I'm choosing spring starter project to create boot application clicking on next here we need to provide several details name of our application what is the build tool that we want to use i'm i'm using maven packaging type jar java version 8 language java group id artifact id and package name i'm giving the package name as com.coding tips clicking on next here we need to choose boot version so it is defaulted to the latest stable version which is 2.2.6 i am not selecting any dependencies because by default it will come with spring boot starter which is sufficient to run spring boot standalone application so i am not selecting any dependency clicking on next here full url is prepared to download this project from spring initializer website so as we are using toolsuit IDE to create the project, we should have net connection for our system. Otherwise, this is not possible, right? Clicking on finish. Now our application got created. I'm expanding this application. So we can see the project folder structure. So it is based on Maven build tool. So Maven folder structure we can observe here. Pom.xml file where we configure our dependencies. SRC main java our business components we will write here configuration properties we will write inside application properties file unit test classes we will write inside this test package right fine so let's open this pom.xml inside the pom.xml we can see boot parent starter is available and inside the dependencies section we can see spring boot starter dependency this dependency is downloading all the required dependencies which are required to develop our boot application fine <clears throat> now i'm opening the pre i'm opening the class which is created by the boot which is application.java this is called as start class this is the main class in our spring boot application boot application execution will begin from here only so inside this class we need to understand two things one is at the rate spring boot application annotation and another one is spring application dot run method so in this video we are going to concentrate on spring application dot run method so this spring application is predefined class available in the spring boot this run is a static method which is available in this spring application class so what is happening inside this run method why we need to call this method if i don't call this method what will happen so if we can understand these details then we can talk about how boot application will execute internally right first let me run this application and see what is the behavior right clicking on this project run as spring boot app so we can see in the console spring banner got printed and some logs also generated and finally application got terminated right now i'm running the same application by making a small change i'm going to comment this spring application run, run method right now again do the same process just run this application and see the behavior right click on this project run as boot app so remember that i commented that run method right this time application started and application got terminated but nothing is printed on the console that means something is missing so what is that so bootstrapping logic is not executed 
when we commented this run method so this run method contains some logic which is used to bootstrap our spring boot application so let's get into the details of this run method right so it is predefined method so we can see the logic available in the predefined method also so simply i am pressing my control and keep mouse cursor on this run method so here we have option open implementation so click on this open implementation now we got into spring application class which is predefined this is available inside a package called org.springframework.boot so inside this run method is available so calling the run method and again calling this run method in this run method we can see the logic which is available you can see the logic which is available right so this logic we can say bootstrapping logic for our boot application let's understand what is this logic right so at the 229 line number run method logic is getting started inside this they are using stopwatch this is used to identify the time how identify the time taken to bootstrap our application then they are trying to use configurable application context reference variable currently which is holding null value then they are creating one array list object which is used to store errors which occur at the time of application startup right then they are getting listeners which are available they are starting those listeners then they are loading default application arguments then they are preparing environment so in this method some logic is available right so they are getting application arguments and they are trying to prepare environment which is required for our application right then they are trying to call print banner method this banner method is responsible to print banner on the console when the application started so we have seen spring logo is printed on the console that is called as banner so in this print banner method again some logic is available so you can off the banner by setting this banner mode to off and we can pass our own banner also if we don't choose our own banner then default banner will be printed so in the coming classes we will see how to customize that banner as well right after that banner this is the main concept preparing application context 311 line number 311 line number they are trying to call one method which is called create application context this method is responsible to start ioc container to required for our application now let's understand if you are developing a project by using spring framework then you are responsible to start the ioc container right but in the spring boot we are not writing any logic this ioc container getting started as part of the run method now see how this ioc container getting started now i am opening create application context method in this method we can see switch case is available right so here the logic is getting executed to identify what class it has to load by using class dot fun there are two cases available case servlet case reactive if not these two then it will go to default case in this default one more class is loading by using this class dot fun so why they are loading these classes what is the logic behind this these classes are responsible to start the ioc container for our boot application right now how it will decide which case it has to use it depends on the starter that we specified in our application form dot xml right so here we are having a starter spring boot starter this is spring boot starter represents it is a simple stand alone application suppose if you specify starter as a web then it considers it is spring boot web application using servlet if you specify web flux it consider this application as reactive based application right so based on the starter that we specify this is switch case logic is going to execute so i am reverting these changes i am keeping it as spring boot starter if you choose spring boot starter web then servlet case will satisfy then it will use this class this is the class it is using to start the ioc container class name annotation config servlet web server application context suppose if there is 
web flex starter in the format xml then this reactive case is going to satisfy this reactive programming is new concept in the spring framework which introduced in 5.x version right web flex is the starter for that if this reactive case is satisfied then it is loading this class this class name annotation config reactive web server application context it is used to start ioc container if these two starters are not satisfying these two cases are not satisfying then it will go under default in the default case it is using one class which is annotation config application context it is used to start the ioc container that means spring boot is using three types of classes to start the ioc container so i think in the spring framework or whenever you work with the spring framework you will talk about bean factory application context those two classes are those are two interfaces which are used to start ioc container so similarly in the spring boot three different classes are available to start the ioc container so in our project we are using simple starter spring boot starter so it comes under default this class will be used right now here class dot for name which is used to load this class once this class is loaded they are calling one predefined method call instantiate that class that is available inside bean utils bean utils dot instantiate class for the class which is loaded object is going to be created as part of that object creation ioc container will start and this create application context method will return the reference of that ioc container which is representing as configurable application context right so what is the return type of this run method the return type of the run method is configurable application context now go back here right so three line three eleven line number got completed that means ioc container will be started then factory instances then it is preparing the context required for that then at 317 stopwatch got stopped with this it will identify how much time it has taken to bootstrap our application then logger is getting started then runners call runners it is calling one method call call runners in the spring boot we have two types of runners one is application runner another one is command line runner so we can write our own application runners and command line runners in our spring boot application what is the purpose of these runners we'll talk in future classes if the runners are available as part of the run method the runners are also going to be executed once that is done finally it is returning that context returning that context what is that context configurable application context i hope you understand what is the logic available inside run method so mainly stopwatch starting logic is available uh, getting the listeners and starting those listeners preparing the environment printing the banner and creating application context then calling the runners this is the main logic which is available inside run method this logic we can say bootstrapping logic for our boot application boot application execution will start with this logic only right so once all that logic is completed then control will come back to our main method now here application run method is returning configurable application context right we can store that i'm pressing control 1 by keeping my mouse cursor at the end of the line click on enter then i got context if you want to get any bean then you can use the reference of this context context dot get bean method all right now so mainly as part of this video we understood about what is this spring application dot run method spring application dot run method is very important method in every spring boot application that method will take care of boot application execution process execution process will begin from this run method only if i comment this run method whatever the logic we have seen this complete logic will not be executed if that logic is not executed bootstrapping will not happen in our spring boot application banner in spring boot so as part of this discussion we will understand what is banner in the spring boot how to customize that banner content and how to disable that banner all right let's get started 
so here i'm taking a spring boot application which we created in our previous videos now first i'm running this application and i will observe how that banner will be printing right click on this project and run as spring boot app right observe the console so here we can see spring is printed this is called banner in the spring boot so this banner is getting printed when our application is getting executed right how this banner will be printed that logic is available as part of run method so let me get inside this run method open implementation going inside the run method going inside this run method right here we have a 310 line number print banner so 310 line number print banner is available so get into the with this method right so here some predefined logic is available to print that banner if banner mode is equal to off then it is simply returning null value banner will not be printed so with this piece of code we can understand we can disable the banner also next one it is trying to load default resource loader by using that class loader then it is trying to print that banner and if a banner mode is equal to lock then it will print the banner only in the log file right so if the banner mode is equal to off banner will be stopped if the banner mode is equal to lock it will print banner only in the log file if these two conditions are not satisfied then banner printer dot print on the system dot out then it is going to print that banner on the console so for the banner we can set three modes off log and console console is the default mode right now let's go to this application and go to this properties file so spring boot banner mode we can set in two ways one is by using this properties file another one by using programmatic approach so first i am preparing this properties file spring dot banner spring dot main mode spring dot main dot banner hyphen mode is equal to control space three options are there console log off so if i choose console it will print banner only on the console that is the default mode we no need to set that if i choose this as log it will print the banner only in the log file if we have the logging in our project for the logging purpose right then we can go for this mode if we set the mode as off then banner is not going to print on the console right banner will not be printed anywhere just we are disabling that banner so earlier we are able to see the banner logo and the console now i set the mode as off and i am running this application again right click run as boot app observe the console right now application started and application terminated but we are not able to see the banner because the mode is off right now how to off this banner from program right here i am going to the start class of the spring boot so here i am commenting this line right so here i am going to use spring application builder I need to create the object for this application builder so new operator new spring application builder of the start class type application class dot there is a method banner mode dot off log console here also three options are there now i am going for off dot run method by using arguments so right earlier we are calling spring application dot run method now i am using spring application builder class for that i am calling the method banner mode for that i am setting the banner mode as off then i am calling run method right this is the way we can stop the banner from program right now let's run this application again right click run as boot app fine application started and it got terminated also banner is not printing on the console the reason the mode of the banner is off now so with this we understood how to stop the banner from properties file and how to stop the banner using programmatic approach right now the next part is how to 
customize this banner it is printing spring as the banner content i don't want to print that spring i want to print my project name or i want to print my company name as a banner for my application how to customize that so spring supporting for customized banners also it supports two types of banners one is text type banner and another one is image type banner here i'm going to demonstrate on text type banner right so to work with text type banner we need to have ascii characters here let me generate ascii characters i'm going to one website there we can generate the ascii character for the given string here i'm typing my channel name coding tips for this ascii characters got generated simply i will copy these characters you can find this url in the description box of this video so you can also generate your own custom text right i'm copying this text i'm going to my project resources folder there i will create one file with a name called banner.txt new file file name i am giving as banner.txt this is the default file name and i'm pasting my channel name in the ascii format which is coding tabs right now let's run this application again run as boot app observe the console now instead of the spring now it is printing coding tips as the banner in our boot application all right so similarly we can specify image also right now suppose if i want to change this file name then you need to configure the property in the properties file spring banner location so in which location your banner file is available that file location also we can configure by default it checks for the banner.txt file under the resources folder which considered as a class path so i hope you understood how can we work with banner in spring boot We will develop one REST API by using Spring Boot and we will test that REST API by using Postman. What is REST API? REST API acts as an interface between two applications to exchange the information. If one application wants to communicate with another application, then we are going to use REST API. REST API acts as a mediator between two applications. For example, if you take any banking application, Google Pay, Phone Pay, and Paytm net banking transactions we are doing. So you are using Google Pay with one bank account, and I'm using Google Pay with another bank account. If you transfer money to my mobile number in the Google Pay, the amount will be added to my account. And similarly, if you try to apply for a passport, it will ask your Aadhaar number. How passport application will validate your Aadhaar number is correct or not? passport application will communicate with the other application here if one application wants to communicate with another application we need a mediator that's where rest api comes into picture rest api acts as an interface between two applications to exchange the data here currently in the market lot of business applications will communicate with the third party applications or internal applications to perform several tasks Let's take an example, a software company wants to credit the salary to all the employees in the month end. This software company will send this employee's data to bank application so that bank will perform all the transactions, salary credits. So one application will communicate with another application to perform the operations. If you take an example of train tickets booking, hotels booking and online food deliveries, they are communicating. One application will communicate with another application for business purpose. That's where REST API comes into picture. Here, client application will be available, server application will be available. They are also called as consumer application and provider application. One application will provide the services to other applications that is called provider application. Another applications will consume the services from the application that is called consumer application. Provider application and consumer applications will be available. Now we are going to develop one provider application which will provide the services by using Spring Boot. Let's start. Here I am using Spring Toolsuit IDE. Let me create one boot project, new Spring Starter project. Here I am taking the project name as Spring Boot REST API. 
Maven build tool packaging type jar java version 8 language java here group id artifact id version package good click on next here in order to create the boot application we need starters those are called pom starters in the spring boot we have a starter called web starter so by using this web starter you can develop our rest api right now along with this i'm going to use a dev tools dependency dev tools is used to restart the server when we made some code changes along with that i'm going to use lombok dependency to generate the setters getters for our binding classes so three dependencies i'm taking one is web starter second one is dev tools and third one is lombok good with this let me create the project Yeah, Spring Boot application is creating. Once this application got created, I will create one binding class and I will create one REST controller. Then we will test that application by using Postman. So project got created successfully. You can go to pom.xml and you can see what all the dependencies that we have added. Yeah, you can see Spring Boot version 2.7.6 and java version 1.8 here dependency web starter and dev tools dependency lombok dependency this a test dependency is coming by default i have not selected that it is default dependency for the boot application now in this project to represent the data i'm going to create one binding class let me create one java class to represent the data i'm going to take a class with a name called product in this class i'm writing three properties one is private integer id and private string name private double price good now here to write the setters getters for these variables lombok provided one annotation called at the rate data along with this i want to generate a parameterized constructor for that we have one annotation all aux constructor which will generate a parameter the constructor with all arguments of this class all the variables when we generate a parameter the constructor zero param constructor will not be generated by the compiler zero param constructor will not be generated for that i'm going to specify no aux constructor when you don't use all aux constructor zero param constructor will be added by our java compiler by default but here we are telling to lombok to add the constructor with the arguments then zero param constructor will not come so i'm using this annotation to get that constructor good so this is our binding class which is used to represent the data then let's create one rest controller product rest controller i'm creating this rest controller will have methods which are binded to http protocol request and response we are going to deal with that methods here to represent this class as a rest controller i'm using one annotation called at the rate rest controller then i'm writing some methods here public string save product now i'm going to expect product data as a parameter product p so this save product method will get the product data in the form of json that data i'm going to accept from request body for that we need to use one annotation called at the rate request body then this method i am binding to a post request by using post mapping so here i can give slash product right so here in future we will write the logic to store the record into database table logic to persist but for time being i am not persisting that log data i am just printing on the console saying that the record we have received once the record is received i will return a success message return product saved like this good this is a post request method which is used to insert the product now next public string get product so here i'm going to take product id as a input now let me write one get request method at the rate get mapping slash product so this method will return the product based on the id so here we don't have a database integration so just let me create one dummy product object product p is equal to new product by using constructor we can set the data product let me take it as id name and price 
right now i need to return this product as this method should return the product method return type i am taking as a product object and i am going to return p yes this method will return the product so this product id whatever the id that we are getting that id we need to represent as a path variable so for that we are going to use one annotation called at the rate path variable so if you want to make this record based on some conditions so here if p id is equal to 100 then i will return this value if p id is equal to 100 then i am going to return this product object else if p id is equal to some other value then else if if a PID double equals to 101 then I'm going to return some other record product P now here product P is equal to 101 let me take it as hard disk and it is 3500 here I'm going to declare one product object as a local variable product P is equal to null P is equal to new product P is equal to new product finally this method will return the product object based on the given ID. Good. Similarly, let me write one more method which will return multiple products. List of products. Public list of products. Get products. Get products. I will create a list of products and I am going to return all the products objects as a collection. So let me take it as product P1 and product P2. P1 and P2. So here mouse and hard disk I'm taking. Now let me represent these products as a collection. So by using arrays dot to list, we can convert them to list object. Arrays dot as list. P1 comma P2. It is going to give list of objects. Let me import java dot util dot list. Yeah, it has given list of products. Now those products I'm going to return from our method. Return products. Good. Let me bind this method also to HTTP method by using get mapping slash products. Slash product method will take a product ID based on the given ID it will return the record. Slash products method will return all the records. Here I'm using hard coded data. In the next video, we are going to see how to integrate our Spring Boot REST API with the database to store the data and retrieve the data. So this is very simple REST API we are creating by using REST controller. This is one method which is mapped to a POST request. It is expecting product data from the request body. And this method is get product. It is binded to a get request. It is taking product ID as input based on that it is returning the data. And here we have get products method. It is binded to get request with the slash products URL pattern. This method will return list of products. All right. So with this, our API is ready. Spring Boot application is ready. Let's run this application. Run as boot application. Run as boot application. By default, this Spring Boot application will execute in the embedded server. Embedded Tomcat server will be given by Spring Boot. You no need to deploy that into external servers. It is having a embedded server. Embedded server is a Tomcat. That embedded Tomcat server will run on the port number 8080. So Tomcat started on the port number 8080. Now my application is running. How to test this application? This application does not have any UI. It is a simple a REST API. To test the REST APIs, we are going to use Postman tool. I have already installed postman application so this is the postman tool here get request localhost my application running in the same machine localhost colon 8080 slash products click on send when I send a request to slash products you see the response I got the product response with 200 as a status code this is first record and this is second record two records we are getting as a response in the form of JSON my method is returning the data in the form of collection, but we received the response in the form of JSON. So when we send a request, Spring Boot application processed our request and it converted that response into JSON and it sent that JSON response to client. Here our client is Postman. Postman is sending a request to our REST API. Suppose I want to get the product based on the ID. So I'm going to pass product ID as a path parameter. 
click on send when i send a request with the one at one i'm getting the response with that product data suppose if i give as one at two click on send now i'm going to get the response with one or two let me check it oh here 100 and one or one sorry here 100 i'm going to give as a input when i give 100 i'm getting the response with 100 product data when i give the request with one or one i'm getting the response based on the given one or one so this method is also working as expected then post method how to send a post request in order to send the post request we need to pass the data in the request body send post request url pattern slash post so we need to send the data method is expecting data in the request body right so here select the request type as post this is the url body in the body we need to set the data body in the request body we need to set that data go to body this request does not have any body let me take that body none raw data give the data in the form of a json here this is the json data i am passing let us see our application console really the data received by our application or not whatever the record we are sending that record i am printing on the console by using sop click on send when we send the request to the rest api using post so it is giving the response as product saved i send the data in the json format let us see our console yes Whatever the data we have sent, the data received by our application, it is printing the data in the console. Client sent the data in the form of JSON. Here, method expecting the data in the form of object. Spring Boot will use message converters to convert that JSON, JSON data into Java object. Whatever the object we have received, the data we have received, converted into object, that object we are printing on the console for understanding purpose. Really, are we getting the data from the postman or not? Yes, we got the data, then we are printing that data. In future, here we will write the logic to insert the record into database. Here we will write the logic to retrieve the records from the database. I hope you understood how to develop one simple REST API by using Spring Boot. So what is the conclusion? To create the REST API, we are using one dependency called WebStarter. It is providing embedded Tomcat server. And we are using one binding class to represent our request data and response data. And we created a REST controller by using at the rate REST controller annotation. We have written three methods. One method is binded to post request. It is used to save the data. It is expecting data in the request body. One method binded to get request. It is expecting product ID as a path parameter. Based on the given ID, it is returning the product data in the JSON format. Third method which is also binded to get request but this method will return multiple products as a response in the form of JSON. All right. We will understand how to develop Spring Boot REST API to perform CRUD operations with MySQL database. Our final project is going to look like this database we are using as mysql to communicate with the database we will use repository concept with the help of data jpa and we will write a service class which will contain our business logic and rest controller will be available in that we will write the methods and we will map them to http protocol methods and we will have a binding class which will represent our request and response data pom.xml file will be available to configure dependencies required for our application like MySQL driver, web starter, Lombok dependency, etc. We will have application.yml. That file will be created in the Spring Boot when we create a boot project. In that file, we will configure our data source properties with which database we want to communicate. The database properties should be configured in our application. And finally, once the project development is completed, we will use Postman tool to test our REST API. By using Postman, we can send HTTP request. I hope you are good with project components. All right, without wasting our time, let's start our development. Here, I'm going to create one project using Toolsuit IDE, File, New, Spring Starter project I'm going to create. I'm giving the name for this project as Spring Boot REST MySQL app. Spring Boot REST MySQL app, click on next. Here, we need to select several dependencies to create our project. I'm going to select WebStarter. 
this web starter will provide embedded container also to run our application. I'm selecting data JPA. By using this we can develop the repositories to communicate with the database. I'm selecting MySQL driver to communicate with MySQL database. People who want to connect with Oracle database, they need to use Oracle driver. Here I'm using MySQL database, so I'm using MySQL driver. Lombok dependency to generate the setters getters required for our binding classes. DevTools dependency to restart our server when we made some code changes. So these are the five dependencies I'm selecting. Web starter, data JPA starter, MySQL driver, Lombok and DevTools. All right, next click on finish. So with this, our MySQL Spring Boot MySQL REST application is getting created. Once this project is created, then we need to start our development. Before that, I want to configure data source properties in our project. Application and properties file is created. Nowadays, properties files are replaced with YMLs, right? So I'm going to convert that properties file to YML. Inside this YML, I need to configure my database properties. As I told that, I will be using MySQL database in this video. So in MySQL, you can execute the query, show databases, use SBMS, SBMS is my schema name, show tables, what all the existing tables in the database it is displaying. In this, I'm going to use one table called course details, but currently if you see the table is not available, my application will create the table dynamically in the database. Now, these database properties, we will configure in application.yml. To save our time, I have saved this data source properties file details. Now, let me configure those properties here. So data source username, password, URL, driver class, and auto DDL update. This is used to generate our table dynamically. Show SQL, whatever the queries that are generated by our application to print those queries on the console, I'm using this. And next, I'm going to create one binding class, which is used to represent our data. I'm going to take that class inside a package called binding class name giving as course. Now I'm going to take three properties here private integer ID private string name and private double price. Three properties three variables I'm taking to generate the setters and getters using Lombok annotation at the rate data. And to represent this class as an entity, I'm using one annotation at the rate entity. To map this class with a database table, I'm giving at the rate table annotation. At the rate table is mandate, not mandatory guys. When you don't write the table annotation, it will use class name as a table name. Class name as table name. Here I'm writing at the rate ID annotation. ID represents that this column is a primary key mapped column. This variable is mapped with the primary key column in the table and generated value. I want to generate the value for this column automatically. For that generator, we can give generator strategy. We can configure for that strategy is equal to identity. As it is a MySQL database, we can use identity generator. At the rate of data, a Lombok annotation will generate setters getters for the variables. At the rate entity to represent this as a persistence related component. At the rate table to map our class name with the table name. Table is not mandatory. If you don't write the table name, class name will be considered as table name. At the rate ID, it is used to represent this ID variable is mapped with primary key column in the database. Let me give it as a course ID. Good. String name, it is a normal variable will be mapped with one column in the database table and the price variable mapped with one column. If you want to map this variable name also with a particular column name, you can write at the rate column annotation, but that is optional. Good. So this class I will be using as a binding as well as I'm going to use it as a entity class to persist the data. Then create a repository. Repository is used to perform operations with the database. I'm going to create a repository with the name course repository in the dot repo package. This repository will extend the properties from JPA repository. The advantage with the data JPA is it is providing ready-made methods to perform the crowd operations. We no need to write the logic. Just to use JPA repository that is extends JPA repository. 
it is expecting what is your entity class our entity class is course right and what is the type of the primary key i will be taking a generic that is serializable as a type of the primary key value public interface course repository extends jpa repository jpa repository is a predefined repository available in data jpa here you can write at the rate repository annotation but it is optional even if you don't write it at the time of project startup jpa repositories will be scanned by our spring boot and they will provide implementation class for our interface in the runtime by using proxy here in the jpa repository there are couple of methods available like find all method sort with find all find all by id save all flush method save and flush there are several methods available we can access those methods from our interface now because our interface is extending properties from jpa repository good so jpa repository is ready so if you observe our repository is ready database is ready we configure database properties also in the yml file now we need to create our service interface to write our logic let me create one interface course service I'm creating this interface in a separate package called service. Now, in this, I'm going to write the methods public, public, string, upset. I will be taking one method with a name called upset. What is upset? Upset means it is a polymorphic method. This method will be used for insertion as well as update. If single method is performing both inserts, insertion and updation that method is called as upset method insert plus update that is called upset i'm using the method name as upset single method will perform insert and update based on the primary key value and i'm taking one method public string save course good sorry save and ups, insert and will be done by upset method only so here i'm going to write one method which is used to get the particular course based on the given id get by id so i'm going to take integer course id as a parameter and i will be taking one more method which will give all the courses available in the table get all get all courses good and one one more method i will be taking which is used to delete the particular course public string delete by id for that i am passing course id as a input so save plus update will be taken care by our upset method get by id will take the id as input will give that particular course record get all courses will give all the existing courses in the database table delete by id to delete the record based on the given id now let me implement this interface new class course service impl it is going to implement that interface that means we need to override all the abstract methods available in our service interface perfect now to represent this service class as a spring bean i'm going to write one annotation at the rate service this service should communicate with the repository service class methods should talk to repository methods so repository should be injected into our service through auto wiring i'm going to perform dependency injection by using auto wide annotation private private course repository in multiple ways we can do that dependency injection guys so one is by using setter injection another one is through constructor injection and third one is field injection now i am using at the rate auto wide annotation course repository is a interface sir where is the implementation you no need to write the implementation that's the beauty of data jpa you no need to write the implementation for this interface jpa will provide the implementation that implementation class object will be injected into our service class good now upset method so how we are going to perform this upset operation insertion plus update you no need to do anything just you call course dot course dot i mean repository dot course repository dot say i'm going to pass course object I'm going to pass course object here I'm going to return success good sir here save method internally it will perform upset operation whatever the object you are passing if that object contains primary key value then it is going to 
update the object update the record whatever the object you are passing if that object does not contain the primary key then it is going to insert the record upset nothing but insert or update based on pk so whatever the entity object you are passing for this repository method if this entity object contains the primary key then it is going to update the record if this entity object does not contain the primary key then it is going to insert the record repository save method that repository save method is a upset method both for insertion as well as for update we are going to use the same method that's why i'm also writing a single method in my service interface called upset good next one get by id based on the given id we need to retrieve the record and we need to return that record good for that we are going to use course repository dot find by id there is a predefined method which is find by id that method is returning that method is returning optional object optional objects are introduced in java 1.8 to avoid null pointer exceptions if you if that method returns directly one object if it is null if you perform operation on the null you will get null pointer exception now when we go for optional optional is like a container first we need to check that in that optional our entity object is present or not if it is present then only we are going to get that find by id dot get and return that i'm going to call find by id method in the repository repository dot find by id with the given primary key value it will try to get the record with that given id if record is available that will be stored into optional if the record is not available our optional will be empty now once we have retrieved that i'm calling find by id dot is present if this condition is satisfied that means record is presented in the optional object we can get that record by calling get method same record i am returning from my method if this condition is not satisfied then it is going to return null object record is not available good get all courses it is very simple to get all the courses from the table there is a method directly find all method that find all method will return list of entities my method also should return list of entities repository find all find all is a predefined method find all is a predefined method so i'm going to directly call that find all method and i'm going to return that good this method will retrieve all the records available in the table and it will return all those records and next one delete by id based on the primary key we need to delete that record first let me check with the given id record is available or not course repository dot exist by id in this repository jpa repository there is a method called exist by id exist by id method will tell you with the given primary key record is presented in the database or not if it is present this method will return true otherwise it will return false with the given id if the record is available my condition will be satisfied then i will come inside the insert if condition then i am going to call course repo dot delete course repo dot delete by id whatever the id we got as input that id i am passing to delete by id method suppose for example with the given id if the record is not available it is going to return saying that no record found it will simply return a message no record found if it is available then it will return delete success delete success perfect let me correct it yeah so this is our delete method delete method is used to delete the record available in the table exists by id based on the given id it will delete the record and this method get all courses to retrieve all the courses available in the table by using find all method find by id to get a single record based on the given id i am calling repository dot find by id that will return optional object and upset method this is our method which is internally calling repository dot save method save method is the upset method which will perform insert or update based on the given entity object if you give the object with the primary key value with the primary key if record is available it will update if not available it will insert so this is our service interface to represent this class as a spring bean i'm using at the rate service annotation inside the service we are injecting repository interface this interface does not have implementation we are not writing that jpa will take care of that jpa will create the implementation in the runtime and it will inject 
that implementation object into our service bin in the runtime. Perfect. Finally, let us create our REST controller to deal with this. Good. So I'm going to use a package in dot dot rest course rest controller. In that we are going to write the methods to call our service layer methods. To represent this class as a rest controller, we are going to use at the rate rest controller annotation. As we have seen in the diagram, rest controller methods will talk to service. Service should be injected into rest controller. Service will talk to repository, repository injected into service, service should be injected into rest controller through dependency injection. How can we inject it? By using auto wiring. Private course service, course service, I'm going to take the variable name as course service. Let's specify at the rate auto wide annotation. So this course service interface reference variable I'm using. IOC container will find implementation class for this service interface will inject that class object into our rest controller first let me write one method public string or we can take a response entity also public response entity as a string I'm going to use one method called create course create course is a method that method is expecting course data which course it has to create that course data it is expecting in the request body. So let us take the annotation as at the rate request body to read the data from the request body. In the request body JSON data will come from the postman that JSON data will be converted into our Java object. Let's bind this method to post request by using post mapping slash course slash course. Now it is going to call course service dot Upsert service method service method we are calling upsert method that method will return a record I mean response it is returning some response that is status that is a status response now here I need to return the response back to the client right rest API will be accessed by client application to return the response to the client I'm using return new response entity whatever the response that we want to return we can send the response response body comma status code http status created post method is used to create the new record so i'm returning the status with the created that is 201 i'm taking the request body i'm going to insert that record and i'm going to return the response with the http status code as 201 this is post request method similarly let's write one method which will return the response of one single course based on the ID for that I'm taking response entity of course get course it is taking integer course ID that course ID we will receive as a path variable to read the data from the URL I'm using annotation called path variable map this method to get request by using get mapping slash course slash course ID now Simply call service layer method course service dot course service dot get by ID. Whatever the ID we received in the URL, same ID we are passing to service layer method. Service layer method will talk to repository will get that record. That record I am going to return from my rest controller. Return new response entity. Response I'm sending course data response i'm going to send course data comma status code okay it is a get request http status i'm giving as okay for post request i'm giving created 201 for get request i'm giving okay that means it is success similarly we need to write one more method which will retrieve all the records from the table and will send to the ui for that i'm writing one more method public list or you can say take response entity you can take the response entity and you can take a list of course good get all courses get all courses perfect here I'm going to call course service dot find all or get all what is the method we have written get all courses this method will return all courses as a collection that I want to return from my rest controller return new response entity 
of all courses status http status dot okay good this method i'm binding to a get request get mapping slash courses when you send a get request to this url pattern it will retrieve all the courses and it will send back in the form of json next one we need one method to update the record and delete the record so public now i can copy this method i can copy this method instead of post mapping i will give it as a put mapping guys put mapping so here update course insertion and updation both will take the course data and both are going to call service layer upset method upset method is a polymorphic method it will decide whether to insert or update based on the given id so this is put request method update course taking the course data calling service dot upset as i told you upset method will perform insertion or update based on the given data if you give primary key it will update if you don't give the primary key it will insert then similarly we need one method to delete the record get by id is there na similarly based on the id only we need to delete the record that i'm going to map with delete mapping at the rate delete mapping course with the id delete course we need the id in the url we are taking that as a path variable service dot delete by id that's it with the given id here i am calling course service dot delete by id what that delete method is going to return delete method will return status that means message success or failure that status i am going to return as a response from this rest controller method so delete mapping method which is expecting course id as a input expecting course id as a input based on that we are trying to delete the record with this our rest controller is ready so final our project is completed we are able to create a repository we are able to create service and we created rest controller one binding class dependencies added in the pom.xml data source properties configured in the application.yml now let us test this application by using postman so first let me run this project guys as we already discussed in the previous videos spring boot application will execute in the embedded container by default apache tomcat will be used as embedded container it will run on the port number 8080 good application is getting started once it started we can test that application in the postman let us see database table is getting created or not we configured auto ddl that means database table should be created fail to configure a data source attribute is not specified no data source could be configured it is not able to read our data source properties that we configured let's update that project maven update we changed it from properties file to yml and we added the data after that we forgot to update the project let's update our project maven update i have given once the project update is completed then we can run the project once again yeah update got completed right click on the project run as boot app yes now you can see that guys create table course details so our table got created in the database check in the database select a star from course details our database table got created but there is no data we need to insert the data in the database now got it good now table got created in the database now our application is also started application is running now let's try to test this application by using postman first it is going to first it is running in the embedded server right when we started that application it is running in the embedded server good go to postman let me make a post request first enter the url localhost colon 8080 slash course we need to send the data in the request body raw data in the json format i will send the data in the json format key and value id id i no need to pass because it is a auto generated 
name let me give the course name as java let me give the course price so i'm giving the course price as 3500 as a double value good i'm giving the data in the request body and i'm sending a post request to this url click on send button when i send that request you can see we received the response as success with the status code as 201 resource is created check in the database earlier the table was empty now select this and run this query now you can see one record is inserted in the database one java 3500 let me insert one more record in the database devops i'm giving this as 4500 click on send one more request i have sent check in the database select star from course details run this query now we can see devops record is also inserted now guys let me check course slash one i'm going to send you a get request with the course id in the input get request i'm sending click on send based on the given course id we are able to retrieve the record and we are getting the response in the json format if i'm giving course id as one i'm getting the java record if i give the course id as two then i'm going to get devops record for example if i send you a request to slash courses get request with the slash courses send that i'm getting all the courses the two records inserted in the table first record and second record two records we retrieved as a json that means we tested three methods as of now post method we tested that is working as expected we are able to inside the record by using this post method we are able to retrieve the single record based on the given id and we are able to retrieve all the records by using this courses url let us test put method and delete method also for put method we need to send the course id in the input guys go to put method let us pass the data in the request body here course id java java price we have 3500 now let me change to 5500 i'm just trying to update i'm just trying to update the price of the course earlier when i'm trying to insert the record i passed only name and price that's why it inserted the record upset operation now i am passing id also put slash course put slash course now once again observe select star from table name here java course price inserted with 3500 now i'm sending the course id in the input name and price as 5500 click on send now see the response success we got the success response with 200 status code for insertion we got 201 for update we got 200 status code go to database select the star from course details run this now you see java course price changed to 5500 are we able to update yes by using put request we are able to update the record by using post request we are able to insert the record by using get request we are able to retrieve the records final one delete go to here click on delete select the delete request slash course slash 2 click on send i'm sending a delete request delete success i got 200 response go to the database select the table yes devops record got deleted second record is deleted because i have given the id as 2 only we have one record now if i give one also course slash 1 with delete click on send that record also got deleted check in the database yes table is empty because all the records got deleted i hope you understood how we tested this application by using postman now this architecture we are able to complete right postman for testing rest controller service repository yml file to de configure data source pom.xml to configure dependencies binding class to represent our data so i hope you are able to understand how to perform crowd operations with mysql database by using spring boot rest api all right how to export database data to excel file by using spring boot application all right let's get started in order to generate excel file by using java application we will use one third party api that is apache poi apache organization provided poi api poi is open source libraries or open source api 
to create and manipulate various file formats. Why we need to use this Apache Poi third party API? Because in Java, there is no built in support to work with Excel files directly. If you want to create the Excel file or if you want to read the Excel file data, Java does not have any direct support. That's why we are using Apache Poi API. Here in this Apache Poi API, we have several classes and methods to work with the Excel file like HSF and XSF API is available to read, write and modify Excel spreadsheets. All right. If you see any Excel file here, one Excel file is called as one workbook. Excel file is called as one workbook. When we open that Excel workbook, we can see sheets in the Excel file in the Excel workbook sheets will be available. We can create multiple sheets. Sheets will be created based on the indexes and in one sheet multiple rows will be available. Row 1, row 2, row 3 like that and in one row multiple columns will be available. Now if you want to generate this excel file by using our Java application, first we need to create a workbook. In that workbook we need to create the sheet. In the sheet we need to create the row. In the row we need to create the cell and in the cell we need to store the data. So in order to do all these operations, Apache Poi API provided several components. Workbook is available, sheet available, row available, cell available. Using this workbook, we can create Excel workbook. Using sheet, we can create the sheet in the workbook based on the index. Inside the sheet, we can create the rows based on the index. Row index will start from zero. Once the row is created, in that row we can create the cell by using index. Inside the cell, we can set the cell data. So in order to generate the Excel report, we need to use these components from Apache Poi API. All right, let us see how to develop one application to generate the Excel report. Here, I'm going to create one Spring Boot application, file, new, Spring Starter project I'm creating. I'm going to create one REST API. To export this data spring boot excel export maven project i'm creating packaging is jar java version is 8 so here spring boot excel report click on next i'm using lombok dependency data jpa i need to read the data from the database for that i'm using data jpa dependency and mysql database i want to connect so i'm using mysql driver web dependency to generate the rest controller and dev tools dependency i'm using by using these dependencies, I'm creating the project. Guys, here, directly we cannot select the POI dependency in this STS IDE, it is not coming. We need to add that Apache POI dependency manually in our pom.xml. So Lombok to generate the setters and getters, data JPA to communicate with the database, MySQL driver to load the driver to connect with the MySQL database, web dependency to create a REST controller, dev tools to reload our code changes. Click on next and finish. Once this project is created, we need to add Excel dependency that is POI dependency. Now here I'm taking this dependency POI over XML from Apache. Take this dependency, add this dependency in the pom.xml. I will share this source code in the git repository. You can find the repository link in the description of this video. Yes, I'm adding the dependency details. Good. POI dependency I have added. It is downloading the dependency. It is completed. Next one. We need to communicate with the database. So data source properties I'm going to add. By default the properties file is created. I'm converting the properties to YML. Nowadays people are using YML files instead of properties. In this YML, we need to configure our data source properties with which database we want to connect the database properties we need to configure in our YML file. Here I'm configuring MySQL database which is running in my machine. I'm giving localhost, database name is SBMS, username and password, MySQL driver class, auto DDL also I'm giving. Let me check the database table. So here course details table is available, select star from table. When we execute this query to retrieve the data, it is saying that there are four records available, four course informations available, four courses information is available in the database table. Now, 
I want to develop the project which will export this table data into one excel file. Good. Database is also ready. Data is ready. I have configured data source properties in YML. Next one. In order to read the data from the database table, we need to create one entity class and repository interface. Let me create one entity class. Class name I'm taking as course. It is a course entity. I need to map this class with the database table. To map the class with the database table, we will use JPA annotations at the rate entity at the rate table. Table name is course details course details and properties in the class those are matching with the database table columns private integer what are the variables available cid c name price available integer cid integer c name and private double price good these are the properties i want to generate setters getters for these properties so i'm using lombok annotation at the rate data good let me import all these packages. Yeah, perfect. Packages got imported. Data imported from Lombok. Table and entity annotations imported from JPA. And this is a primary key column mapped value. So I'm using at the rate ID annotation to represent that CID is a primary key column in the database table. Perfect. Entity is ready. To retrieve the data, I'm going to create one repository interface. So let me take it as course repository course repository here inside this repository i'm extending the properties from jpa repository so jpa repository i'm extending extends jpa repository jpa repository provided by spring data jpa which is used to perform crud operations with the database without writing any logic we can directly call the methods of jpa repository to perform those operations perfect with this my repository is also ready now let me write the actual business logic to generate the excel file here i'm writing one class called course service or i can say it as a report service we are generating a report right let me call it as report service in this report service we need to build our actual logic right my service should talk to repository so let me inject repository object into my service class by using auto wiring course repository with the help of auto wide annotation to represent this service as a spring bean i'm using one annotation called at the rate service at the rate service and repository object is also injected into our service now let's write the actual method public void generate excel here i'm taking http servlet response as a parameter the reason is when users send a request directly that excel file should be downloaded in the browser so i need to send that excel file as a response that's the reason i'm taking http servlet response object as a parameter whatever the excel file that i'm going to generate by using this method that excel file i will add in the response object and i will send it to the client directly good so with this we are able to write our service method now what is the logic that we need to write in the service method first we need to get the data from the database course repo dot find all when i call the find all it is going to give me list of courses available in the database table list of records available in the database table once we got the list of records as we discussed we need to create a workbook in the workbook we need to create the sheet in the sheet we need to create the row in the row we need to create the cell in the cell we need to set the data good so first let me create a workbook hsf workbook i'm creating it is a predefined class available in apache poi api hsf workbook i'm going to take this as workbook is equal to new hsf workbook workbook object got created once the workbook is created inside that workbook we need to create a sheet workbook dot create sheet for the sheet you can give the name also i'm giving the name as courses info courses info let us store this sheet into one variable hsf sheet once the sheet is created in the sheet we need to create the row sheet dot create row as discussed row will have a index first i want to create the header row 
so i mean table data metadata here id here name then here price like this i need to set the data like this id name and price so the first row i'm going to consider as a header row to represent metadata one row is created based on the index in that row we need to create the cell this one row is created in that row we need to create the cell row index will start from 0 cell index also will start from 0 once the row is created based on that row object we are going to create the cell row dot create cell cell of 0 dot set cell value i'm going for method chaining concept set of cell value here i'm setting the value first value is id similarly i'm going to create cell 1 cell 2 id name and price course id course name course price so in a row i'm creating three cells cell index 1 cell index 2 0 1 2 so with that header row will be created and the header data will be stored into that next one once the header row is created now i need to create the data rows and i need to set the data row 0 already taken for the header now actual data should be stored in the remaining rows from the first row onwards the row index 1 how we are going to do that for this i am going to take first integer row index data row index is equal to 1 row index 0 already taken for header row data row will start from first index data row index is equal to 1 and i am going to take for each loop list of courses available let me take each course from the courses now now i need to create one row to store the data how to create a row here already we have a sheet object sheet dot create row based on data row index based on the data row index now data row is created inside this data row we need to set the data data row dot create cell cell index always every row cell will start with zero create cell of zero dot set a cell value I want to set course dot get course id similarly data row dot create cell of cell 1 dot set cell value of course dot get course name course dot get course name good next one data row dot create cell of cell index 2 dot set cell value I need to set the price good course dot get course price i'm setting this now row index zero i have taken for storing header data and in that header row zero is the cell first cell second cell that means in one row three cells will be created like this id name price then my data will be stored in this row data will be stored in this row data will be stored in this row like this data rows will be created so in every row cell indexes will be available 0 1 2 again second data second record 0 1 2 like that fine once first row data is created once first data row is created i need to increment the data row for the second record data row index plus plus i'm using increment operator in order to increment that row index first data will be first record will be created in the first row it is going to store the data in the first row in the three cells once the record first record is inserted in that row then i'm increasing row index then it is going to take then it is going to take second row to store the second record to take a third row for third record for fourth record fourth row will be considered like this row index i am deciding here as one then i am incrementing that for every new record once this concept is done then we need to store this excel data to a excel file and that file we need to send in the response for that i'm going to get output stream here already i have taken http servlet response as a parameter response dot get servlet output stream response dot get output stream i'm getting servlet output stream as a parameter i mean as a return type get output stream method is giving me output stream object output stream object once that output stream object we got then let me use workbook dot write of output stream so whatever the data is available in the workbook i'm writing that data to output stream okay guys once it is done i'm doing workbook dot close i'm closing the workbook and i'm closing 
output stream as well. So this is the method which will read the data from the database table which will create one excel workbook. In that workbook it will create one sheet. In that sheet it will create one row. That row first row is called as a data row. First row index is a zero. Once the first row is created with the data then I am creating data rows by using the data available in the collection. If you get 10 records from the table, 10 data rows will be created. If you get 30 records from the table, 30 rows will be created. For every record, one row will be created based on row index. Once the rows creation is completed with the cells, then we are creating output stream object from the response. That output stream object we are using and we are writing the workbook data to that output stream. Once writing the data portion is completed, then we are closing the workbook, then we are closing our output stream. Got it. Fine. Now, let us create one REST controller in order to access this service layer method. Report REST controller I am going to create. Report REST controller. REST controller will talk to our service layer method. So let us inject service object here. Private report service through auto wiring. I am using at the rate auto wide annotation. Here rest controller, I am using at the rate rest controller. Inside the rest controller, let us write a method so that we can make a request to that method. Then it will download the Excel file for us. Now, let me create the rest controller method. That rest controller method I will bind it to a get request. Public void generate Excel report. Okay. Now, for this method, I am taking one parameter as HTTP servlet response. We need the response object to send the data. When my method is expecting HTTP servlet response, so whenever that Spring Boot IOC container is loading our classes and when the request comes to that Spring Boot application, it will understand that my method is expecting HTTP servlet response. So response object will be created by our dispatcher servlet here and it is going to pass that response object as a parameter to this method. This method I am binding to a get request at the rate get mapping binding to a URL slash Excel. That's it. Good. Now let us call our service layer method report service dot generate Excel by passing the response object. That's it. Now this method is throwing one exception. So let me use throws keyword throws exception. Perfect. I'm calling my service layer method. I'm calling my service layer method. Good. Whatever the record that we are generating, that record should be stored into response object. That record, whatever the file that is generating, that file should be downloaded whenever we send a request to this REST controller method, right? For that, we need to set the content type, how the response is going to send, response dot set content type. We need to set the content type as a key content type that is going to represent in which format we are sending the response to the client application slash octet stream we are going to send the response as a stream octet stream that file will be generated file should be sent to the client and we need to set response a header also for that we are going to use key and value string header key and a header value header value how we are going to send it that data we are going to send as a file attachment, right? Content disposition, that is the key we are going to write. And header value, I want to send this value as an attachment. So what is the name that you want to use for the attachment? You can give file name is equal to courses.xls, that's it. Now let us send this response dot, response dot set header, response dot set a header key and value header key is available and a header value is available that's it so this is my rest controller class i'm using at the rate rest control annotation and in this rest controller i'm injecting my service by using auto wiring i'm writing one get request method in this get request method i'm taking response object as a parameter dispatcher servlet will call our controller method then it will pass the response object as a parameter. Response content type I am setting as octet stream because this method is 
responsible to download the excel file i'm setting the response header content disposition as a attachment the response should be sent as a file attachment with the courses.xls set a header i'm doing that finally i'm calling my service method by passing the response object good save this let me update my project maven update yeah project is getting updated once project update completed let us run this application right click run as boot application our application is getting started yeah fine guys with this our application got started spring boot will use embedded server apache tomcat apache tomcat is running on the port number 8080 now let's go to browser and let's make a request to our application and see whether excel report is getting generated or not so i'm going to open browser now here let us make a request localhost colon 8080 slash excel localhost colon 8080 slash excel i'm hitting this url and let us see what is the response that we are going to get from our application send the request when i send a request now see in the database query got executed that means it is retrieving records from the database table and let us see what is the response that we are getting from our application we will understand how to deploy spring boot application by using docker all right let's get started docker is a containerization platform containers currently containers are trending in the market right container is nothing but easily shippable we can transfer the containers from one location to another location easily that's why the docker people has given the logo also as a ship logo inside the ship you can see the containers easily we can ship them our applications will become portable when we use docker here what is the main advantage of going for docker if you want to run our application for example if you take a spring boot application in order to run that spring boot application we need java software if we want to use a database for our application then we need java plus database to run our application whenever we develop our application directly we cannot give to the client for execution we need to test our application in multiple environments then only we will give to client so we are going to test in the dev environment sit environment and uat environment pilot environment will be available and prod will be available when we want to test our application in multiple environments what about the softwares which are required to run java software mysql software and all we need to install those softwares in all the machines that will take lot of time to reduce that problem we are going to use docker containers here when we go for a docker containers our application will execute inside a container and that the docker software will take care of all the required softwares those are called as dependencies of our application for running the spring boot application we need java java is a dependency for boot application if you have a database database will become dependency for our java application instead of we are installing all the dependencies in all the machines we are going to use docker docker will provide the infrastructure to run our application easily in any platform in any machine so that's why docker is a trending in the market with the help of this docker we can easily deploy our application into multiple environments as a containers how to dockerize the application in order to dockerize the application we need to write a docker file docker file contains a set of instructions to install the required dependencies for our application in the docker file we will specify where is our application code and what dependencies are required to run that code by using the docker file we are going to build a docker image docker image is like a package which contains our application code plus application dependencies once the docker image is created you can take that docker image and you can run that image in any platform once you run the image docker container will be created inside the container our application will be executed 
Docker file, Docker image, Docker container. Docker file contains set of instructions to build the Docker image. Docker image is a package which contains application code plus application dependencies. Once image is created, we can run that image in any machine. In any machine. Once you run the image, container will be created. Inside the container, our application will be available. Docker container is called runtime instance of our application. In order to run the Docker containers, we need a Docker engine, Docker software we need to install in our machine, either Windows or Mac or Linux. If you install the Docker engine, then you can run the Docker containers by using Docker image. Once you run the Docker image, all the required dependencies will be taken care by Docker only. You can simply execute Docker image in any platform. Your application will become portable. All right, let us see how to Dockerize this application. Here, I'm going to create one Spring Boot application. In that, I will create one REST controller. Then I will package that Spring Boot application by using Maven. A jar file will be created. Then I will write a Docker file for the Spring Boot application. By using that docker file, I will create a docker image. Once the docker image is created, I will run the docker image, then it will create a docker container. Once the container is created, we can access that application in the browser. Alright, let's get into the practicals of this. Here I'm using Spring Toolsuit IDE. I'm going to create one project, new Spring Starter project. I'm using the name of the project as Spring Boot underscore Docker underscore app, Maven as a build tool, packaging type jar, group ID in dot Ashok IT, package name in dot Ashok IT, artifact ID Spring Boot underscore Docker underscore app. Click on next. In order to create this boot application, I'm using boot version 2.7.6 and I need a web dependency to create the REST controller. I'm selecting web starter. Click on next, click on finish. Spring Boot project is getting created. Inside this project, I'm going to create one REST controller and I will map our method to one GET request. Create a class. I'm taking a class name as Welcome REST Controller. Inside this class, we can write a method and map that method to HTTP request. Public string GET message. Here I'm going to return Welcome to Ashok ID. Got it. Now, this class is a normal Java class now. I want to make it as a REST controller. Let us take a annotation at the rate REST controller. Let's map it to a method by using get mapping. All right. I'm creating a REST controller. It's done. So once this REST controller is ready, now we need to package our application by using Maven. We are using Maven as a build tool. Let me go to pom.xml. In the pom.xml, we can configure the name of the jar file by using final name. Here I'm giving the name of our application as sb underscore docker underscore app. You can give any name. If you give this name, the jar file will be created with this name. It is not mandatory, but optional. Here. If you don't give that final name, then it will take our group ID, our artifact ID and our version. A lengthy name will be given for the jar file. So I want to make it as simple. So I'm giving the name as sb underscore docker underscore app. That's it in the pom.xml. Let us go to our workspace. So this is our boot docker app. In this project, pom.xml is available target directory is available inside the target jar is not available because we have not packaged our application yet now let me open command prompt and let me package this project by using maven here i am using maven goal mvn clean package when i use mvn clean package it is going to download all the required dependencies and it is going to package our application once application is packaged, we can see the jar file in the project target directory. It is downloading the required dependencies. Finally, our build got success. Let us verify that in the target directory with the given name, our jar file got created. So now I want to deploy this jar file by using Docker. For that, we need to create a Docker file. In this project, I'm going to write a Docker file.
Now, in this Docker file, we need to write the instructions to build the Docker image. The first instruction is from I'm going to specify the base image open JDK either Java 8 or Java 11 or Java 17 which version of Java we need to run this application we are going to specify that by using from then we need to copy the jar file from our system path to docker container where the jar file is available inside the project target available inside the target this is the jar file let us take this I'm going to tell here inside the target directory my jar file is available this is the path of the jar copy this jar into copy this jar into container location so slash user slash app is the default location in the docker vm so that means a docker container will be created that is a virtual machine with linux in that this location will be available i'm telling to docker to copy the jar file from our project target directory to docker image in this location once the jar is copied to that location, I will set the work directory as that location where our jar is available. Then we need to tell the docker to execute our jar file from that location. So I'm going to use entry point instruction. It is used to execute our instructions while container is creating. How to run a jar file? So we are going to use java, java space hyphen jar then name of the jar file. This is the jar file that it has to execute. I'm telling to docker to install java 11 version. Copy the jar file from the project target directory to this location in the docker. Then go to that location and execute our jar file. This is the docker file that I'm writing to create a docker image. Once this docker file is available, we can build the docker image. Let's go to command prompt. Now, before going to build the docker image, first let me check are there any docker images available in my machine and guys here make a note in order to build the image and run the image docker software should be installed in my machine docker software is running as a docker desktop in my windows machine docker is running docker software is running now as the docker software is running i can execute the docker commands i'm going to use a command called docker images when i execute the docker images command it is not giving me any output that means no images are available in my machine no images are available in my machine now in my project docker file is available by using that docker file i need to build docker image so what is the command that we are going to use to build a docker image docker build command we are going to use docker build iphone t iphone t represents a tag name that means image name you can give any name for the image i'm giving the image name as my esb app spring boot application space dot this dot represents that it will check in the current directory in this current directory project directory docker file is available to build a docker image docker file is the input docker build is the command iphone t represents name of the image dot represents current working directory it will search for the docker file in the current working directory execute this command once we execute this command, as per the docker file, it is going to build a docker image. Docker image creation is in progress. Yes, finally our docker image got created. So how to verify the docker image is really created or not? By executing that command docker images. Yes, when I execute the docker images command, it is saying that one image is created 20 seconds ago. Earlier when we execute the docker images command, it has not given any output. Now when I execute the docker images command, it is giving that image which is created. SB app is the name of our image. This is the idea of the image. Just 20 seconds ago, our docker image got created. Once the docker image is created, we need to run that image so that docker container will be created. So what is the command to run docker image? Right. Docker run iphone d iphone d is optional iphone d represents detached mode iphone p it is a port mapping so docker container nothing but a virtual machine will be created in that machine our application will execute i need to map that container port to our host machine port host machine nothing but our computer where docker engine is running in my machine i want to use port number 8080 docker container that means our spring boot application will execute with the 8080 as a port number 
Here this 8080 is a container port which is using by our Spring Boot. This 8080 is our host port. I am mapping container port with host port. Docker run iPhone D iPhone P port mapping space image name. What is our image name? SB app is our image name. Spring Boot application using 8080. Host port I am using 8080. You can change the host port also, no problem. iPhone D represents detached mode. That means once this command is executed, my command prompt should be free to execute other commands. If you don't use iPhone D, container will create. You will see the logs directly. You can't execute any other command. That's why I'm going for detached mode. Execute this command. It is creating a container. Yes, container got created. So this is giving some output. What is the proof to say that container got created? Let us see the containers which are running by using docker ps command. When I execute docker ps command, it is saying that one container is running. This is the name ID of the name of the container. This is the image which used to create that container. This is the command which executed by Docker engine. 16 seconds ago, our container got created. This is the container port and this is the host port. Now, Docker container is running. That a Docker container port I map it to host port. Now, let us try to access that application in the browser. Let's go to browser localhost colon host port. What is the host port we have given? 8080. Let's hit the URL. Yes, we are able to get the message. Welcome to Ashok IT. So who is giving this message? Our container is giving that message. Inside the container, our Spring Boot application is executing. In the Spring Boot application, our REST controller is available. REST controller is having a method which is binded to get request with the default URL pattern. So when I send localhost colon 8080 slash, it is giving the response for us. So with this, we are able to deploy Spring Boot application by using Docker. For example, if I deploy this Spring Boot application by using Docker in the Linux machine, that machine public IP we are going to use to access our application. All right, good. If you want to understand more about the Docker, so here I have prepared some videos on the Docker. What is Docker and how to work with Docker? What are the Docker commands that we need to know? Here we have used two commands. One is Docker build command and Docker run command. Docker Build command is used to build the docker image. Docker run command is used to run the docker image. And we have executed docker images command which will display what all the images are available in our machine. And similarly, we can use a docker ps command to see what all the containers running in our machine. I hope you understood how to work with the docker. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and click on bell icon for upcoming videos. I will share this docker commands video URL also in the description. How to deploy Spring Boot application in AWS Cloud. All right, let's get started. AWS Cloud. AWS stands for Amazon Web Services. This AWS is one of the leading cloud provider in the market. So what is this cloud? Cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of IT resources over the internet with pay as you go pricing. That means whatever the resources that you need to set up your application, whatever the infrastructure that you need to set up your application, you can take that infrastructure over the internet with pay as you go pricing. If you want to set up one application, you need some machines, you need some servers, you need storage, you need network, you need database. All these IT resources you can take from cloud provider like AWS. Pay as you go pricing means how much you will use for that you need to pay. AWS providing 200 plus services over the web. Whatever the IT resources that you need, you can take from the AWS. Instead of we are buying, owning and maintaining our data centers, servers, network, storage, everything you can take from AWS. AWS is one of the leading cloud provider in the market. All right, so with this we understood what is Spring Boot and what is AWS Cloud. Spring Boot is used to develop Spring-based applications with less configurations. AWS is one of the cloud provider which will provide IT resources over the internet. Now, we are going to create one boot application and we will deploy that boot application in AWS Cloud. What is the procedure I am going to follow? I will create one boot application in my local machine. 
I will package that application using Maven goals and I will launch one EC2 instance in the AWS cloud with Linux operating system. I will connect to that Linux machine using mobile XTREM software. Then I will install Java software in the EC2 because to run the boot application, we need Java. Once that Java got installed, then I will upload this jar file into EC2 instance from the mobile XTREM. Then I will run that boot application. Then we can access that application in our browser. All right, let's get started with this. I'm using Spring Toolsuit IDE to create boot application. File, new, Spring Starter project. Build tool I'm using Maven, packaging type jar, group ID in dot Ashok IT, artifact ID boot web app, base package in dot Ashok IT. Click on next, version 2.7.2, .2, the latest version of the Spring Boot. Web dependency I'm using that is a web starter to develop web application using Spring Boot. All right, the boot application is getting created. In this boot application, I have just added one web starter guys, nothing else. That web starter will provide the support to develop the web application and it will provide Tomcat as the default embedded container. So when start class is created, start class is the entry point for boot application execution. Let us create one REST controller. I'm creating a controller with a name called Welcome REST Controller. Welcome REST Controller. In this REST Controller, I'm going to write one method. So just welcome message method. I'm writing return welcome to Ashok IT. I'm not writing any logic here currently. Just I'm writing a method which is returning a message. This method I'm binding to get request using get mapping annotation. To represent this class as a REST controller, I'm using at the rate REST controller annotation and I'm importing that package. REST controller package I have imported, get mapping package also imported. All right, first let's run this application in the local and check it run as boot application. You see on the console, the boot application started and it deployed into Tomcat server, which is running on the port number 8080. You have seen, I have not downloaded the Tomcat. I have not installed the Tomcat. The Tomcat is coming with the Spring Boot as embedded container. Now let's try to access this application in our browser. It is running in my local machine. So let's go with localhost colon 8080 default port number. Welcome to Ashokite. We are able to access the application in the local. Same application I want to deploy in the AWS cloud. All right. For that, I'm going to use my AWS account and I will launch one EC2 instance. Currently, in my account, no instance is in the running state. Let me launch one EC2 instance. Amazon Linux. T2 Micro, which is free tier eligible. One instance I'm taking. Default storage 8 GB tags. You can give me a tag name for that. It is optional step. I'm giving the tag name as Linux VM one security group guys. If you don't have a security group, you can go with the default security group. It will create here. We need to enable SSH protocol to connect with the Linux machine. We need this SSH protocol with 22 port. And our Spring Boot application runs on the Tomcat with the default port 8080. You need to enable that 8080 port also using add rule option. You can enable that port here. 8080 port you can enable here. Custom traffic anywhere, right? If you already have a security group, you can select existing security group. I have created one security group, Ashoka a security group. In this security group, already I have enabled that inbound rule custom TCP rule with 8080 and SSH protocol 22. You can use your existing security group or you can create new security group. Make sure SSH protocol and this TCP with 8080 both are enabled in the inbound rules. Next review and launch here. It will ask one key pair file. It is used to connect with our EC2 instances securely. So if you have a key pair already select it, otherwise you can create a new key pair. I already have that. I'm selecting existing one. Launch instances. So this instance 
launched in the AWS. So it will take some time to get started. Instant state currently in the pending. Let's wait till it comes to available state. Once this instance is ready, we can connect to this instance using Mobile Extra. All right. Yep. Currently, this instance is in the running state now. Select this instance. It will give you one public IP. Select this public IP address. Go to Mobile Extra. I have downloaded Mobile Extra in my machine. Using this Mobile Extra, I will connect to this Linux machine. Mobile Extra is opening. All right. Session SSH remote host. That is the public IP. Username. The default username for this instance is EC2 user. Connection, I'm using this private key PEM file. Open. OK. I connected to this machine. All right. So it will ask you to update the existing packages using M package manager. Sudo M update. Yes, updating the existing packages in this Linux machine. Once it is done, I'm going to install Java software in this Linux to run our boot application. All right, the update got completed. Currently, check Java is available in this machine or not. Java version is not available. Java currently not available in this machine. sudo yum install Java. I'm installing Java here. Confirm. Java installation got completed. So let us check Java version. Yes, Java Open JDK 17 got installed. All right. Currently, in this machine, do we have our application to run? No, our application is not ready. Now I am going to package our application as a jar file. All right. So once this application is packaged as a jar file, we can upload this jar file into Linux machine and we can execute. Currently, if we go to this application target directory, target folder, no jar file is available. Let's package our application using Maven. So right click run as Maven build. So I'm going to use the goal as clean package apply run. Maven goals I'm executing to package our application as a jar file packaging type we mentioned as a jar. So the jar file will be created. Maven clean plugin. It is going to delete the target folder. Then it is going to execute compile plugin. Compile plugin will compile our application. Then it is going to package our application as a jar file. It's taking some time guys. Build failure. See here. It is saying that no compiler is provided in this environment. Perhaps you are running on the JRE. So in our application build path currently JRE available. So we need to add the JDK. Go to build path. Configure build path. Libraries. Click on this JRE. Edit. Alternate JRE. Currently JDK not available. Let's add it. Next home directory. Let's go to our C directory where Java is installed. Let's go to our C directory where the Java is installed. C program files, Java, add the JDK, select the JDK folder. Don't select up to bin, select up to only JDK. Click on finish, select the JDK now, apply, apply and close. Now you can see JDK is available, select it, finish, apply, close. Now JDK is added. Let's execute Maven goal once again, Maven build. Fine guys now finally our build success. So let's go here and check the target directory. Here we can see Spring Boot jar file got created. Now we can run our application using this jar file. Let's go to mobile extra here currently in this machine. Our jar is not available. I'm going to upload the jar into this Linux machine jar is available in my Windows machine. I want to run that in the AWS EC2 instance. So Using mobile extra, you can directly upload that jar file. Here we have upload option guys. See here upload to current folder. Click on this and it is going to ask you where is that 
jar is available select the location select the location of that jar open that yeah this is my jar file i'm selecting this jar click on open that jar file is getting uploaded into my working directory yes that jar file got uploaded let us see ls hyphen l jar is available yes we can run this jar java hyphen jar jar file name I'm trying to execute this application in the AWS cloud EC2 instance. Now you see the jar file is getting executed. Application started on the Tomcat with port number 8080. This is the default container which we are getting. Now application is executing in the EC2 instance which is created in the AWS cloud. Now how to access this application in our browser? So for our EC2 instance public IP generated right? Using this public IP we can access this application. Earlier I accessed using localhost which is running in my machine. Now my application is available in the AWS cloud. To access that we are going to use that public IP of EC2 instance colon port number 8080 colon port number 8080 public IP colon 8080 one second colon 8080 now see here I'm able to access that application in my browser where this application is running now this application is running in AWS cloud this is the public IP of our EC2 and 8080 is the port number so I hope you understood how to deploy our Spring Boot application into AWS cloud. So these are the steps I have followed. How to connect with AWS cloud database by using Spring Boot application. So first let's understand what is this Amazon RDS service. RDS is a service in the AWS cloud which is used to manage relational databases. Here if you want to communicate with a database first we need to set up the database software in our system. We need to take care of the database. We need to take care of database security. We need to take care of database backup, database update. Lot of things that we need to take care in order to maintain a database which is required for our application. Here, instead of we are managing the database, we can use AWS RDS service that is a managed service in the AWS cloud. By using that service, we can set up a relational database in the cloud. Amazon RDS. RDS stands for Relational Database Service in the AWS. Here, the advantage of going with this RDS is several administration tasks like availability of the database scalability of the database, security of the database, performance of the database, backup, such a kind of administrator activities will be taken care by AWS only. You just need to set up a database in the AWS cloud and you need to connect to the database by using your application. The remaining the management related administration related tasks will be taken care by AWS cloud. That's why most of the projects in the companies most of the companies will prefer this cloud databases because cloud provider will manage our database we will just use the database and we will pay rent for that this aws cloud providing the database based on pay as you go service how much you use for that you need to pay the money for aws cloud so i'm going to show you a demo how to create a database in the aws cloud and how to connect with the database by using our Spring Boot application. All right. So here I logged in into my AWS account. I have selected the region as a Mumbai. Now here AWS RDS service is available. You can search for that service. In this account currently no database is available. Let me click on create database. Here you can select what type of database you want to create relational databases like Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, SQL Server, several databases it is supporting as part of RDS service. So I am going for standard create database engines which are supporting by RDS, Aurora, MySQL, MariaDB, 
Postgres, Oracle, SQL Server like that. Several relational databases are supported by RDS. I'm selecting MySQL database engine. Now, in this MySQL database engine, here MySQL version is selected as 8.0.30. I'm keeping like that. I'm not changing that version. And I'm going here. Do you want this database for production purpose or dev test purpose or free tire? I'm using this for free tire. I'm selecting this free tire here. Good. Now, availability and durability settings database identifier name of the database. So I'm not changing that identifier. Credentials. You can change the username and password. By default, username is admin. Password. You can select that password. I'm selecting password right confirm the password let me choose the password and let me enter that password perfect so I have given password and confirm password instance configuration D t3 micro instance then come down connectivity default VPC it requires a network to create the database AWS will provide one default VPC for the network the default VPC is selected by default and here you need to select public access yes we need to give the public access as yes because my application is running in my local machine my application should connect with the cloud database so public access the database should have a public access select this option as yes and the security group if you have security group already in the AWS account, you can choose the existing security group. If you don't have the security group, then you need to create the security group and you need to select that security group. I have selected my by default, it selected default security group, which is available and I don't have any availability zone preference. So good. Go with password authentication, additional configuration. So here at initial database name. So in the, in the MySQL, we need to create a database by using create database database name. If you want to create some database by default, you can give the name of the database here. I'm giving the database name as courses database. Some courses database I'm giving as a name. Then simply click on create. That's it. Yes, you observe what are the options that I have selected. Standard create option I have selected. MySQL database I have selected and free tier I have selected then I have selected password username by default admin password I have given my own password then VPC by default default VPC only here I have changed public access to yes because we need to connect with the database from outside security group default only then in the additional configuration I have given the database name as courses database that's it yeah click on create database so when we click on create database it will take some time to create the database in the cloud database creation is in progress now you can see that database creation is in progress once this database is created we can see the database endpoint that means the username of the database and you can see credentials of the database here Database creation is in progress. Your database might take few minutes to launch. View credentials details. When you click on this button, it is giving the username of the database and it is giving password of the database. This username and password one time downloadable guys. So I'm going to take my database username as admin password Ashok321. I can copy that password. In our Spring Boot application, data source properties will configure in application.yml. So in the previous video, I have shown you how to connect with the MySQL database and how to perform CRUD operations. This project is developed in the previous video. Now here, same application I'm using, just I'm changing username and password. Username is admin and password is Ashok321. Earlier, this application connected to MySQL database which is available in my machine that is local host. Now I want to connect with database available in AWS cloud. So still database creation is in progress. Let's click on the database identifier. Once this database is created successfully here it will display endpoint. Endpoint represents the URL of the database and port number. For MySQL database default port number is 3306 only. So we need to wait till this database creation got completed once the database status is created it is active 
then here we can see endpoint url and we can see port number right and meanwhile we have selected one security group for this database right that security group will stop our request if you don't enable the particular protocol this database will be running on the protocol 3306 let's go to the security group and you need to enable the port number the port number of this mysql database is 3306 right go to security group in that security group inbound rules concept will be available so edit the inbound rules in the inbound rules you need to enable a protocol right which protocol we need to enable so we need to add custom tcp the protocol as 3306 anywhere so we need to add that protocol and save that that means we are telling to this aws security group to allow the request for that 3306 protocol that is the meaning of that now still database creation is in progress let's wait still it is getting created instance database still the status is creating open the database and verify still endpoint url is not generated we need to wait till the endpoint url got generated right database status still creating yeah right guys now we can see that our database status is backing up now here if you observe the endpoint url got generated and the port number is also generated so endpoint nothing but the database host where the database is running and what is the port number it is using double three zero six double three zero six port number we have to enable in the security group inbound rule we have already done that process take this database host go to application.yml file instead of local host now i am going to give the database host which is created in the aws cloud 3306 port number i have given initial database name as courses database name i have given as courses and this is our driver class username password and database url in the database url earlier we have given local host to connect with our local database now our database is created in the aws cloud so i am giving the local host as AWS RDS database endpoint perfect so with this we are good now once this database is created are we able to connect with the database or not how to verify that for that we can use mysql workbench let me go for workbench and let me test database connection really the cloud database is working as expected or not once we take the confirmation then we will run the application and we will see that here I will create a new connection in this MySQL workbench. New connection. Connection name AWS RDS MySQL. And host name. Host name here it is displaying as endpoint. Take this endpoint name. Give it as a host. Port number 3306. Username is admin. Password Ashok321. I have given. Click on OK. Now test connection check it yes successfully made the sql connection that means by using this mysql workbench we are able to connect with the database available in aws cloud if our connection is successfully here that means our application also can connect for that now let me connect to this and let me check database is created or not we have given the initial database name as courses so let me execute a command show databases I'm executing a command called show databases. Let me run this query. Yes. So show databases. See here I have executed. It is giving the database name as courses. Now use the database as database name. Use database name courses. Then show tables. I want to display all the tables available in the database. No tables available because it is a brand new database. Just now we have created. Now let's go to our boot application. In the boot application, we have repository, we have entity class, which is mapped to a database table. And in the YML file, we have given DDL auto update, table will be created in our database. Good, run the project. Before that, let me do a Maven update, update, update the project, force update, okay. Once the project is updated successfully, then let's run this project and see 
table is getting created in the database or not and we will insert one record also and we will test that good update successful run as boot application spring boot application is getting started this spring boot application should connect with database available in the aws cloud because i have configured aws rds database properties in application.yml Yeah, guys, see here our application is started in the console you can see that create table query got executed so that means it connected with our database and it created table also in the database now let's go to workbench and let's check show tables earlier it has not given any result now execute show tables now you can see course details table got created in cloud database then select a star from table name what is the table name course underscore details let's select this query and execute it in the table we don't have any records now my application is a rest api so let me send a request by using postman and let me test record is inserting or not go to postman i want to send you a post request so here i'm selecting the request type as post localhost colon 8080 slash course so in our application we are having one method in the rest controller that method is binded to post request it will take the course data in the request body as a json that will insert the record into database table let us test this functionality localhost colon 8080 slash course data i am giving in the body as a json click on send when we click on send here you can see on the console insert query got printed that means insert query is executed go to the database and check that select a star from database yes one record got inserted we are able to communicate with aws cloud database by using spring boot application what we have done for that we created a database in the aws cloud we have taken endpoint of the database and we have taken port number we enable that port number in the security group 3306 is the default port number that credentials of the database we configured in application.yml username password and database host and database port and database name with this we are able to understand how to communicate with the aws cloud database by using spring boot application thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our channel and click on bell icon for more updates